This is kind of one of those strange videos, really, because it's possible that this will be completely out of date within an hour of, uh, of actually publishing it. But never mind, I'll do it anyway. I want to talk today about what will undoubtedly be the future of Google Drive and probably most other cloud services, and that's Google Drive File Stream. So back in September of this year, 2017, Google rolled out Google Drive File Stream to all G Suite users. So I want to talk to you about the good and the bad of File Stream, but first of all, just to explain what it is. So currently, your Google Drive has a folder that sits on your computer, and Everything is mirrored by the app, or not everything, actually. You select a certain number of folders that are then mirrored to the cloud. So you have, let's say you have 10 files on your PC. Those 10 files will exist in the cloud. You can have more in the cloud, which you don't sync up to your PC. And of course, you can have other files on your PC, which aren't part of your cloud storage. It's a standard setup. It's the same for Dropbox. It's the same for OneDrive. It's the same for pretty much everything. Google Drive File Stream takes a slightly different approach. It absolutely relies on connectivity. Nothing apart from temporary files is stored locally. It's all stored in the cloud. And so what happens is that a network drive is created on your system. And that network drive is just a cloud drive. So you're going to files as if they are local files, just exactly the same as if they're sat on your SSD or your hard drive, but they're cloud files. It's a perfect idea, and it once it's implemented well, which it isn't yet, and I'll get to that in a moment, it will be, as I mentioned, the future. I mean, it's, it's just the natural progression of anything like this. It's a wonderful idea, and when it works, it works very, very well. The problem is, it doesn't always work, and it has certain glitches. First of all, let's find it here. Uh, we'll just go straight to here and see if we can find the download. So I'm going to download it for Windows here. I'm just going to show you actually how simple it is to install so the actual installer is 153 meg, which to me seems fairly big, considering considering what it is. It's not, you know, it's a, I don't know how much it seems to install quite quickly though. So maybe that's not a bad thing. I'm not too sure, but um, it just feels like that's quite big to me. So we have our uh, file. I'll just open that up, and it has is I don't know, here's well just drag this to the right here and to zoom in on here so you can see so uh, install google drive file stream click ok and that is it done there, there, are, there are no options nothing else it's all installed and now at the bottom right hand side of my screen which i can't show you actually because the capture window i've got a kind of standard icon you know a little bit like the one you get with google drive but it's a it's slightly different and of course, at that point, you would have to sign in. But because I've had it on my system before, I don't have to sign in. It's already kind of remembered my details. And I'm, I'm already signed into other Google stuff through, you know, the, the stuff I do on YouTube and Gmail and all that. But if I go to my PC, if I go to the sort of main computer area now and bring that up, we notice that we have an extra drive. I should have showed you this before, shouldn't I? I shouldn't have showed you before. That, you know that we didn't have this drive before but we've now got a drive here called google drive file stream and it's my k drive it's allocated it to my k drive and you can see that the total size of the drive is one exabyte i mean how often do you <laughs> how often do you see that on windows it's amazing uh i think i assume that's what that stands for and if i go into there i've got my team drives and i've got my drive and there is my everything you can see everything on my drive i'm not going to just dwell on that because obviously that's sort of private stuff in my drive as well as um not so private stuff so you can browse anything you want in there exactly as you would on a uh, pc now here are the main three problems that i currently have 
with Google Drive file stream. And I don't want this to be a negative video because, you know, as I've sa already said, this is definitely the way to go. It is a great, great idea. It works, sometimes it works wonderfully well, and it's just a perfect implementation considering that sort of con connectivity is as it is now and, you know, you're always online and you can always download stuff, stuff pretty quickly. Firstly, if you go into... Uh, if you go into some th a folder that's got like sort of, I'm going to have to find something here, aren't I? Let me just find something. I'll be back in a second. Right. So I've got some video templates here. Now, what I, these are relatively big files. And uh, can I going to go into here? Um, let's see, it's letting me, okay, right, here we go. So what you've seen now is a, a, a big lag. And we've now it's now gone to not responding at the top here because it's having to re-index this directory. It's got these all the kind of like the main stuff at the front, the very front end saying, oh, but but because these are a little bit bigger, haven't been index indexed for a while, they're taking some serious time to come up. Because they're videos, you know, it's having to now generate thumbnails for videos as well. This is okay. I mean, this is working all right. The problem is sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you go into a folder and Windows Explorer, I'm not sure how well it would work on a Mac, Windows Explorer sits there, doesn't know what it's supposed to have in the folder, doesn't like it, and just crashes. And I've seen that happen a couple of times. And when it hasn't happened, it's taken some pretty lengthy time to come up with these files. I mean, you saw there, it took a bit of time, but you know, the, exam the example I'm talking about really would take much, much longer than that. So that's the first problem, is that not everything is indexed fast, en fast enough for a good browser experience. You're used to, when you go into sort of other folders in your drives, you're used to those that stuff coming up straight away. And yes, it might take a bit of time to create the thumbnails, but at least it starts doing it. It doesn't just sit there and not do anything. And then Windows just goes, don't like it, and crashes. As for problem number one. Problem number two, to me at least, is that you cannot change the name of this. As you can see, I have a fairly sort of definite structure to how I name my drives, and I want to name this the same. Not the same as one of these, but uh, you know, I want to keep it something consistent. But the problem is, when you rename it, you can rename it. I mean, I can go into here, and I can go into the properties of it, and I can name it something different. But when I restart, it'll restart. In fact, let me try that now. So if I close out of the software, just exiting down the bottom right-hand side. So I'm closing out of the software now, and what that actually does is get rid of the drive entirely. You can see that the network drive is just not there any, anymore. There's no, it's you know, unmounted or whatever. So I'm going to go back into Drive File Stream now, open it up again, and already it's renamed it back to Google Drive File Stream. To me, that's an annoyance. It's not absolutely essential. Doesn't matter that much, does it? I mean, it's just personally, I would prefer it to be able to be named something that I choose. But this is the absolute key problem, and this is critical. Currently, you see that this is Drive K. Now, on a Windows system, drive letters still mean a lot. That's not really the case for kind of Linux and Unix and probably Mac. Um, but on a Windows system, a drive letter means a lot. It's all about sort of partitions and, you know, it's still the same as it was however many years ago. So this is drive K. And I, if, if I'm going to have things mapped to drive k or if i'm gonna th things in you know things in quick access here might end up getting related to drive k so let me just have a look on here so so quick access now actually has drive k in it when i restart google drive file stream the software just decides to make this drive letter whatever it want ne once next time it could be drive l and the fact it'll just change randomly we might stay drive K for a couple of boot ups, but then it'll just totally change. So if you send someone a link that's drive letter related, or you have stuff on your PC that is drive letter related, which these things are, they just become, well, I don't know where that is, a question mark. Or if you actually use this as you want to use it, you go into Word and you open a file from 
this drive, if you then go into open recent, of course, that file's not there anymore because it was in K something, but it's now in L something. It makes the implementation, the proper full implementation of this completely impossible on a Windows system at least. And I've now stopped using it because of it. It's just a pain in the butt, honestly. It's really, really difficult to use because of that drive letter changing. This cannot work like this. There has to be an option in software to say, I want my Google Drive to be this letter. It can't be that difficult to implement. I think it's just an oversight or they've just rolled it out, haven't, you know, haven't finished doing the software or they haven't rolled out that feature yet or something. But I really, really do hope it comes because other than, other than that, it's a pretty great idea and much, much nicer. Oh, and if you're wondering, if you copy, if you want to copy something to your drive, if you open up the uh, folder you, or you create a new folder, you can copy stuff across and it just dumps it in a temporary directory on your computer. So you can drop like two gig of files in, in like the time it takes to copy over to another hard drive, you know, hundreds of mega second. And then it just sits in the background uploading them and then deletes the temp files. It's completely, you know, yes, you use a bit of temporary local storage, but it's completely seamless. You don't even notice it. So there we go. Anyway, just an initial look at Google Drive file stream. Quick look at the install, explanation what it's all about, and three of the main current niggles as of December 2017. Let's hope they sort them out pretty soon. If you've used this software and you know of a way around that problem, please, please do let me know. Uh, and uh, if you have used it and just, you know, you've got any thoughts on it, also just comment and uh, put, put, put your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will catch you soon.